having signed into Tinkercad, I'll select Create a New Circuit. It immediately brings up a workspace that's been given a title. And if that uh, name of that file doesn't make sense, I'll change it to be something that does make sense for future reference. I'm going to call this circuit to light and LED. Now if I was to go back to my dashboard by clicking on the Tinkercad logo, I'd now have circuit to light and LED. And if I click on Tinker this, it will take me back into the file. And you can see the name has now been changed. If I click on this arrow here, it will close the panel that shows me the different components that I can select. If I type something into the search bar, such as transistor, it will bring up all of the components that meet that descriptor that are in the program. Otherwise, it defaults to the basic high use items over here. And that's primarily what we'll be using. Let's start off by making the circuit, figure one, a circuit that lights an LED from our guidebook. In order to create this, we'll need to drag in a 9 volt battery, a light emitting diode, an LED, and a resistor. So to make it look the same as our actual circuit, we'll align the, the uh, components and put them in the same location. So let's start by taking our 9 volt battery and we notice when we click on it, it gets a blue outline. And if I hover my cursor over the terminals, I can see one is positive, one is negative. Let's rotate this by clicking on the rotate button in the upper left hand corner so that I can orient it the same as in the diagram. I'll move my resistor into position and I'll move my LED. So I'll just change this LED slightly here and align it like that. Now if I was to take the color of my wire, change it, I'm just going to make it match the terminal of the battery. When I click on the terminal, it gives me these crosshairs, which then starts to let me connect it to various objects. But if at any time I click my trackpad or my mouse, I can actually do a 90 degree bend and keep the circuit all neat and tidy. And when I get to my resistor, if I click again, my wire is now connected. I can do the same here. I take my wire and I connect it to my LED. I want that to be a straight line, so I'll just move that a little. Now I'll change my wire color to black, go to my negative terminal, and I now have a nice looking circuit. If I was to click on simulation, it would start trying to operate the circuit. But what we notice right away is my LED did not light up. That's because I've actually put my LED in backwards. An LED has a long leg and a short leg. The long leg is called the anode, short leg the cathode. So I'm going to, for a moment, Get rid of this wire and get rid of that wire. I'm now going to rotate my LED 180 degrees. And let's go back and connect this up. and try our simulation once again. And we find this time that the LED lights up. 
So the direction of the flow of electrons through an LED is important. They can only travel one direction and can only make the LED light up when they travel one direction. Let's go back to our resistor. Our resistor by default had one kilo ohm of resistance. I can change that. I could make that just one ohm of resistance. And what you'll notice is the color, the different color strips, the bands on the resistor change when I change it over here. If I was to put the, click on the simulation button again, it lights up, but it actually destroys the LED. It burns it out because the current amount, the, the amount of current that's going through the circuit is too much for that LED to handle. So we need to learn to choose the appropriate amount of resistance. Let's go ahead and put in 400 change that to 400 ohms and start our simulation and sure enough that was in the correct amount of resistance to still light it up. So there's a document that it gets into calculating and determining the resistance required if that's relevant to the circuits that you're building. Now if I want to share this image, if I want to put it into a document, if I click on share, I can opt for snapshot of your design and download that. That's now on my computer and I can insert it into my document.